let's go a little esoteric. Sure. You have to. We <laughs> barely did at the beginning. I thought we were going to go all the way down the path of extraterrestrial <laughs> intervention. Um, but telomeres, you were talking about obviously 250 years, 1000 years ago is when we have a gene splice edit, something what seem what I've heard is sort of unexplainable. We don't understand why there is a splice in the gen, in the genetic coding, um, mm -hmm. and that uh, that telomeres are capped. And is that something that appears to have been done to us? And then also, is it true that they're capped for us to live to 120 years only? Up until literally a couple of years ago, the only uh, thinking around telomeres was here's your DNA. Right. And remember at the very beginning, I was saying your DNA getting damaged is a definition of aging. That's yeah. that's what it, your cells unravel, your DNA gets damaged and you age. So the telomeres are like bumpers. So they protect your DNA. And so telomeres have been a, a marker for biological age because yeah. the more worn down they are, yeah. the more you've abused your DNA. And that's how old you actually are biologically. Right. But this is based on these various algorithms and clocks that assume we can get to 120. So if you look at our innate biological function and structure, we are beings that are designed to live to 120. And those telomeres mirrors are meant to last until that age. So there's there's two things. Why is there a cap? Is is it is it to protect us, which we think it is, or is it to cap us? Which one, which one is it? Because isn't is there stories in ancient history, Bible even, where people live for several hundred, six, seven, eight hundred years? Yeah, every ancient tradition talks about people living for centuries. right? And, and we're seeing evidence of that. I mean, you've spoken to plenty of people that have evidence of that. So what happened? Is it that we have something that we evolved into to protect our DNA? Or since there was a magic edit, was there also a magic cap installed to limit how how old our DNA, how many years our DNA can actually last? So we in science, we're reacting to everything. So we found this thing and we say, no, it's a bumper, it's a protector. And if we measure it, we know how old we are. But if we dig deeper and we start to look at what we've learned historically, there's plenty of content that's not from 2023 that was from, you know, minus 20 250,000, right? That tells us otherwise, that people did live longer. It's too coincidental that different people in different parts of the world that never spoke to each other all say the same thing. And it's not that we just live longer. They're, they're very specific about the like six to 800 years thing. And they're from different parts of the world at different times up until recent history. The recent recorded history, which is what you learn in school, is when this ends, this story ends, kind of, kind of post-Christ type history, right? Everything be before that is a blur. To us, it's not a blur if you look at ancient texts that are available. We just aren't taught it, right? And it's a very different story if you look at this stuff. So it's a question mark. Is this telomere protective or is it a cap? It seems like it's both. Could those stories have been off-planet extraterrestrial or hybrid beings that did live six, eight hundred years, but we, this, we as a homo sapien, sapien or whatever we are, um, human being, we only have ever lived a certain amount of time, which seems to be much shorter. Is that that could be possible too? So, if there was a technology a quarter million years ago that took a primate and edited two parts of the genome to make us who we are, somebody with some intelligence had to do that, and it wasn't us. <laughs> exactly. Right. It. it that was not evolution. Evolution doesn't happen in an edit. It takes millions of years. Since that time, we have not seen evolution in ourselves. Right? So how did that happen overnight? That was a cause. That was that was intentional. So I don't know if the answer is the Lord came down and edited us, right? And created us. Is the answer that there's another species from another planet or from this planet that maybe is still here somewhere that we don't know about, right? So what? But what's clear is that the way we became who we are was not the way every other species became who they are. It was not we did not evolve into it. We became it. There was a switch that was turned on that was immediate, and that was two edits to diff two different parts of our genome that are clear that no scientist can dip dispute exist. They just don't want to talk about why it happened. Nobody's trying to investigate why it happened. What the F is junk DNA? So junk DNA 
are sections of your genetic code that have no information, which to me, in the perfection of this human body, the complexity of this human body, there's no room for junk, right? So it's just, if you're programming something and there's certain code that you don't need anymore, you turn it off. So at the time, if we feel that there was an edit, who edited us? I think you have some theories there, right? There was also junk and junk wasn't added. It, it seems like there's literal sections of our DNA, which we don't know what they do because they're turned off that are literally off. So it's as if you had a line of computer code and somebody took a portion of it and censored it. And how can you see the difference between deleted and censored? Uh, because it's still there. Is right? there structure? So There's still structure? Yeah, it's There's structure. No, it's, yeah, like, it's, what's the difference between DNA that you can see versus the junk DNA that is empty, essentially. What does it look like tangibly? So it is encoded, right? So there's there's letters that, uh, there's four letters, A, B, C, T, that yeah. make up your genetic code. And there's many, many combinations. Right. Each, each gene is thousands of letters long. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then so sometimes there's a C instead of a T, and now that gene doesn't do its job properly in okay. a certain location. So there's no code in the junk. It's, it's literal junk. But how is, do you see the code? How do you even see a code? Oh, uh, so that's sequencing. So now we're getting into when, so I take your saliva, which I did, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and I extract your DNA from the saliva. There's a tool that does that. And we then put that DNA into a sequencing machine, which literally knows how to read the code on every chromosome and every, so that that's how it, it's literally read, right? By the sequencing machine. Okay. Illumina is the biggest company that does that. Most companies use Illumina. Uh, and when you're sequencing it, this section can't be read. There's nothing to read. There's no code. So, and, and and again, if there's nothing in this body that isn't purposeful, yeah. right? There's nothing that isn't purposeful. And yeah. something as precious and, you know, a fundamental, foundational, sorry, as our genetic code, right. Right. having space spaces, like empty spaces, there's there's a purpose there and the purpose is either it used to exist and it was turned off yeah or we don't know how to turn it on right well as you know from our friend kaya part of her book the sophia code is about verbal initiations that activate dormant dna and that makes sense to me because we talk about elevating consciousness mm -hmm. we don't understand the science like the practical mechanism of what happens what if you elevate consciousness, which means you're now sending and receiving what you couldn't send and receive before, that means that those antennas or whatever those things are, are now activated. Mm -hmm. You didn't have access to them prior to that. Mm -hmm. So that could be that. Maybe there's certain section our DNA turn off to prevent us from accessing a certain level of consciousness that we can fight and turn on. I've experienced this. You've talked, we talked to you about this. You've experienced this in the last two years. I've experienced more of this in the rest of my life combined. You know, there's there's shifts happening right now that if you're yeah. on the right path, you're going to experience it for sure. Yeah. Uh, and it's there. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, I'm going to do this now, now that you said this. I'm going to keep working on elevating my consciousness and I'm going to resequence my DNA to see if something's changed that didn't exist before. Oh my God. Or can you see what percentage of your body has active DNA versus unread? Is there... Right, because so, if you're re you're reading some, but some doesn't read. So if you gave a if you had a, d a sample, can it can can it evaluate a ratio? So every cell in your body is has DNA in it. So every single right. cell has active DNA. There's very little junk DNA. It's micro, like little fragments here and there that are junk. Okay. Yeah. Still some junk in there. Um. All right, you have a book. What's the book called? So the book is called The DNA Way, and Early on in this journey, you know, when we built the company, we were still a research company at the time. Biotech is a weird place to be because you learn and you don't even know why you're learning yet. Like, what is what is the product going to be? It doesn't even matter. We're just researching. And that's where we were. And so I realized as I was doing this that we needed to normalize DNA as a tool. People don't even know that it has to be part of your health toolkit. If you don't understand your foundational code, how do you make every other decision? Sure. You're going to trial and error, one size fit all things until they work. And so um, I found, I was recommended this book agent who represents 80 best-selling medical type authors. And he said, I love your story. You need to write a book. I agree with you. 
And then he came back to me after paying him for four or five months. And he said, you got rejected by every single publisher that exists because you're not a doctor. And I said, well, I told you up front that I'm not a doctor. And I told you up front that what I'm trying to fix is the healthcare system. And it takes somebody from the outside to see what's what, what the blinders on, what everybody can't see. Right. He said, I'm sorry, it, this isn't working. So I said, give me the list of who rejected us. Right. And I said, thank you. You know, here's your check. Thank you for your time. I'll deal with this myself. So I I found of that list of publishers, somebody who represented a few authors that I like, that I enjoy, including Mindy, by the way, right? Uh, Mindy Pels. Uh, and I called them. And within three days, I had a book deal. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's so <laughs> Yeah. Great. And because they didn't, I mean, what we do is so impactful, but the, him as a guy that represents 80 doctors, thinks like the doctors know he himself couldn't get out of that medical thinking right like so anyways so the 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 intention was the purpose of this book is for me to go through my personal genome and show how easy it is to use these tools and change your life i've changed my life i've gone from a 38 year old that was 43 biologically to a 43 year old that is 33 biologically I'm the best shape of my life mentally, physically, in every way, even spiritually. My ability to connect is beyond what it's ever been, right? Uh, and so I wanted to share that with everybody because whether you have a test or not, there's things to learn in terms of how does the science work? What can you do? There's things that you'll start to clue into and you'll see the world differently. You'll see pe people differently because you'll understand how your body actually works. If you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.